everyone, welcome back. In the context of 2 Thessalonians, Paul has written to the Thessalonian church, reminding them that Jesus will come back. And no, despite false teaching and fake letters sent in Paul's name, Jesus has not already come back. But now he turns to address the question of how ought we to live in the reality that Jesus has not returned as we eagerly anticipate and look forward to the day when Jesus does return. And his answer might be surprising to a lot of, a lot of Christian people today. His answer is wrapped up in this idea of tradition. We read about Paul's words about tradition in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, starting in verse 13 this week. It says, but we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as firstfruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. To this he called you through, the, through our gospel, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. As I mentioned in the introduction, there has been this reaction by evangelical Protestant Christians against tradition. This, is, this rejection of tradition is often an overreaction to the overemphasis of tradition we see in the Catholic Church and in other Judeo-Christian traditions. Um, Paul, however, gives us some reminders about tradition. And we ought to take these as warnings when we, when we begin to view tradition as a negative. Tradition is not bad. Paul has told the Thessalonians that they're doing good, their faith is strong, um, they, are, they are an encouragement, and that if they continue, they've been called by God, and if they continue in their faith, they will be exalted in that along with and because of the work of Jesus Christ. But that persisting in faith does not just happen. You don't just roll out of bed and be a, a faith in Jesus Christ superstar. Growing in faith takes practice. And practice often relies on traditions. Traditions unite people. They give them a common practice and a shared history that they draw on when they partake in those traditions. In our church, we have two traditions handed down to us by Jesus Christ himself, a tradition of baptism and a tradition of communion. And while these are also sacraments and these are ways that we practice our faith, they are traditions. They are part of our faith tradition. Other, less, uh, I would say, spiritually significant traditions that your churches may have are things like Father's Day barbecues, quarterly lunches, game nights. And while these things might not be of a theological significance to our faith, we find that tradition when, when those traditions are tied to our faith communities, cause us to rub elbows with those who, who are or may one day be followers of Jesus Christ along with us in those contexts. Traditions are useful to help keep us focused. I want to meddle here. This is, I'm going to go off script. This is Hoover off script. If we do away with our Christian traditions, if we set aside our church traditions that we have, VBS in the summer, men's retreat, if we do away with these, we will replace them with something. And I think a problem of our modern church is we have forgotten that our traditions are not bad. They're actually good. They give us a sense of, of common unity, a common practice. And at some point we have looked at them and said, well, that's not what I want. I don't feel like doing that, and so I'm not going to. I want to challenge you in this. How many of you growing up didn't feel like going to Christmas dinner? 
but you did it because it's family tradition. It might not have been a great thing. It might not have felt good, but it's what you do. It's how you partake in the family on the, on the, in the Christmas season. Sometimes church traditions are the same thing. We do not have to do them. We are not saved by them. Sometimes we don't want to do them. Sometimes we don't feel like it. But the part of tradition that's important to remember is sometimes we should do it anyway because it unites us and gives us a common goal and it makes us a part of the community we belong to. Traditions are good. We ought to cherish the good traditions that we have been handed down and we ought to do away with the bad traditions that are not helpful and do not help us focus on Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for your word and thank you for traditions. God, I pray that, that whatever our traditions in our faith are, I pray that you would help us to value them, we, that we would seek out traditions that draw us closer to you, that we would seek out traditions that point others to you when they see us practice them. God, may we not look down on tradition, but may we also not make tradition an idol and a thing that we must do. We are saved by you alone, God. Help us to practice that faith. In your name we pray. Amen. Alrighty, y'all, we will be back next time as we go through Thessalonians paragraph by paragraph. We love you, and we'll see you soon.